You are mighty, you are holy, you are awesome in your power. You have risen, you have conquered, you have beaten the power of death. You are mighty, you are holy, you are awesome in your power. You have risen. You have beaten the power of death. Hallelujah. You are awesome in your power. You have risen. You have conquered. You have beaten the power of death. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are holy. You are awesome in your power. You have risen. You have conquered. Yeah, you have beaten. before the Lord. to be faithful and true there is no rock there is no God like God there is no rock there is no rock there is no God like our God no other name worthy of all our praise the rock of salvation that cannot be moved is proven himself to be faithful and true there is no rock there is no god like our rock of ages jesus is our rock rock of ages jesus is our rock rock of ages jesus is our rock Rock of ages, Jesus is our rock. There is no rock, there is no God like ours. There is no rock, there is no God like ours. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. No other name. Worthy of all our praise The rock of salvation that cannot be moved He's proven himself to be faithful and true There is no rock, there is no God like God Let's lift it up Rock of ages Jesus is our rock Rock of ages Jesus is our rock, rock of ages. Jesus is our rock, rock of ages. Jesus is our rock. There is 
no rock, there is no God like ours. There is no rock, there is no God like ours. There is no rock, there is no God like ours. Yes, Lord, there's no one like you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. You reign forever, Lord Jesus. Praise you. so good, isn't he? Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all you ladies out there. You have the love like Jesus. Unconditional love. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. can keep us apart so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace is enough your grace God, you use the weak to lead the strong, you lead us in the song of your salvation, and all your people sing along, sing, so remember your people,
just get happy sometimes, you know? There's nothing like just letting go and letting God. It'll do you good, trust me. If you, if you just feel like shouting, if you feel like singing really loud, don't worry about your neighbor next door. They're just going to say amen. And if you just feel like just dancing, just be like a child. David danced before the Lord, and it gave him joy, and it gave God joy, and God doesn't get nervous that you're dancing. If you just jump up and down, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. But hey, you're moving your body and you're worshiping the Lord with all your soul, your mind, your spirit, and your might. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Woo! I worked up a little bit of a, <laughs> a little cardio right there. <laughs> that was good. Get your workout on this morning. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you for what you've done. And we thank you for what you've done, Lord, for each one of us. the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you Trust in 
It says, be not troubled, be not in fear for the things that are happening in this world and in this land. For the Lord your God is your God and he will be with you wherever you go. Thank you, Jesus, for your words of encouragement, Lord, your word of truth, your promise, Lord, in times when everything is shaking so that the things of your kingdom may remain and everything else be removed. And we understand that, Lord, and we don't fear. We walk in faith, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Sing it again. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love. should die for me amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again amazing love My king should die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, should die for me? My joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Jesus, you are my king. Jesus, you
can it be that you, my king, should die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor still saving people today, Lord. The power of the Spirit is at work in the earth, redeeming souls from darkness, bringing them into the kingdom of your dear Son. And Lord, we pray that every flyer that was handed out and every person that was given something about barbecue and soul, Lord, that you would just put it on our heart to be there, Lord, and be touched by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Bless this service and bless every mother in here today with a special touch from you, Lord, from your love and from your grace. And give them in power to do what you have called them to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. I know you want to continue. I'd love to continue. Maybe we'll have one day we just, have, we just sing the whole service and worship. Amen. Come on, Brother Ken. <laughs> Brother Rose, that sounds good to me. <laughs> we can keep that praise and worship going. Amen. Amen. Whoo, it was a good, that was some good praise and worship. Amen. Amen. And we, and we don't have to stop because we don't hear the music, right? <laughs> we can keep it going. Amen. I know we will keep it going. Well, good morning, Grace Community Church. We're so glad to see you all here this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We hope your day has started off terrifically so far. I know that, that your significant other has gotten up and fixed you breakfast, <laughs> made you coffee, and, and did all that stuff for you. And, and you should have a rose. All the mothers out there, let me see your roses. You should have a rose. Amen. All right. That's awesome. Amen. Well, look, we're so glad that you all are with us this morning because you could have chosen to go elsewhere to worship this morning. But we're so glad that you're with us today. Amen. And also, those that are watching us online today, we're glad that you have chosen to tune in with us today. And we hope that you have been blessed thus far as we have been thus far. Amen. We went out yesterday, y'all, to, to hand out flyers in the community yesterday. I think we did over, what, about 450 uh, flyers yesterday in the community, you know, yeah, we had, we had a lot. We had quite a bit. The pastor and Mike went out, and, and me and Dorothy went out, and First Lady went out a little bit. We just had an awesome time yesterday. And so we know that, you know, you couldn't be there yesterday to be with us, but please come out on next Saturday. We still have quite a few flyers to hand out in the community for our Barbecue and Soul event, which is May the 21st from 4 to 6. Free food, of course, and I'm, I'm so excited that Dr. Al McKinney is going to, McKinney is going to be with us again. That is a talented guy. If you've never heard him before, that guy, he is cool. But I know he's, he, he's nothing like the, the Jason Fury band, though, that's going to, you know, we're going to enjoy those guys 
you know, we're going to have a good time. And Roosevelt and uh, singer Becky uh, Darnell is going to be with us. And, and free food. Good food, y'all. Good food. Good food. Because we love to eat. Amen. And then also on Wednesday, please come out on Wednesday at 6 p.m. for our Wednesday night uh, fellowship dinner. Remember to bring a meal, you know, or just bring yourself, you know. But, but for those that have the talents, you know, bring, sign up to bring a meal in the foyer because we look forward to that. And then also the Women of Grace, they're having their meeting. A woman's Bible study, Extraordinary Woman, half an hour, hosted by Ann Wilkins, our own first lady, on May the 14th at 11 a.m., right here at Grace. So, ladies, adjust your calendars, your schedule, come and be a part of that. I know the ladies have an awesome time at that. I hear my wife speaking about it. You know, she enjoys it. So, come and be a part of it. And also, our Sunday school by Pastor. Vincent Sanders at 915. Come and be a part of that. That's every Sunday. Come on and be a part of that. And then also we have you no know, Pastor Vincent is starting his, his Bible study on Thursday evenings at Grace starting on the 12th of May at 6 30 p.m. on Thursday. So come and be a part of that. And then we also have uh, Chris Dew who is going to be doing our firearm safety training class on May the 28th at 10 a.m. And, and the sign-up for it, is that correct? May the 22nd is the last day to sign up. So if you want to learn about firearms and how to handle firearms, come and be a part of that. Amen. And so we've got a lot going on here at Grace Community Church, a whole lot, you know. And, and so we came up here on Friday night, and we saw... Uh, Sandy, our very own Sandy, doing her thing up here on Friday night with the little ones. That was an awesome. That was awesome, you know. And I and I heard that they y'all had an awesome time yesterday, baby shower. Uh, let's they, they showed you a lot of love, you know. We we just love our church family. We love our servants, and we now it is time to hear the word of God that we've been waiting to hear from our very own Doctor Ben Wilkins. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't get any better. Hey, y'all, we're in our series, uh, Elijah, Man on Fire. And we're going to look at a story about a mother and her little boy who got uh, fatally ill. But before we read the story and go into the story, I want to talk to you about two different competing worldviews. You know, um, uh, now, a worldview is simply how you look at life and how you determine what's right and what's wrong, what's valuable, what's not valuable, what's worthy and what's not, and all, the, all those kinds of things. But there are two, two competing worldviews going on in our world right now, and it always has been, but, it, but they've completely come into just a sharp focus in the time we're in where they're competing against each other. And one world sees the world as created by God. The other world sees, the other worldview sees it as just uh, the result of blind naturalistic forces and that there is no God that has anything to do with anything. And, you know, and if we believe in the beginning God, see that, that changes everything. It changes literally everything about how you view the world. And if you don't, that changes everything. So uh, if we believe there's no God, we basically just care about us and the ones we care about. And in this worldview, in that, that, that's a naturalistic worldview. See, if, if people get in the way of what I want and what I need and what I think is best, then, then people can be eliminated. People can be done away with. And, you know, on the other hand, see, if we believe that God created everything, life has special purpose to it. Every life is present. Every person is precious in the sight of God. Everyone has value and purpose. And see, these two worldviews are clashing with each other right now. And they're competing to see which one will win out over the other one. 
and to make the world a better place to, to live in. And for instance, when the issue of abortion comes up, one worldview believes that believes in God, see, believes that that life inside the mother's womb is, is precious and to be guarded and protected. But, and the other worldview does not acknowledge God. Well, see, they believe that that little human being in there, because of where it's located or because of how little it is, you can just kill it. And get it if it if it gets in the way of the of the mother to be happy, so uh, you know and and praise God He forgives everyone who's ever been a part of an abortion. Praise God He can forgive anything, but mothers have an incredibly important role in shaping that worldview. See that's what mothers do, y'all. They prepare a child to view the world the way God intended it to be and the way it is. In reality, it is a world that God created. And for those mothers who recognize that and begin to instill that in their children from day one, they prepare them to get ready to see their need to be related to that creator. Amen. You know, so so they're they're see that's the way the world is. And when you and do it just opposite of that, it brings chaos into a child's life. They, they grow up in a world that doesn't make sense, where right and wrong doesn't make sense, you know, and all of that. But, but see, see, we believe in, that God created this world and that we are accountable to Him. And when you don't, you know you don't. Look at Romans 1.20. It says, For since the creation of the world... God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. See, from the early, earliest days of a child, a mother teaches her, her, her child that God created everything. And see, that orders their world. That gets them started right. Well, they grow up with a godly worldview. See, that's not enough to be saved but it prepares them for that. It prepares them to know that there's a God out there that they're accountable to, that they can't just do anything they want to. But, uh, but we're looking at our story today about a godly woman who had a little boy. A, a, he's a little boy, and he becomes mortally ill. But number one, let's look at when the unthinkable happens. You know, sometimes life can hit us on the blind side. You know, things are going just fine and wham, something comes at us and we're totally unprepared for it. See, but God, God doesn't want us to live in fear of, of things like that, but, but they happen. You know, and God wants us to live so that we are so in touch with Him that when those do th things do happen, they might still rock our world, but we're holding on to the rock you know, who, who can't be shaken, you know, but see, our relationship with him is all, everything matters, but look in 1 Kings 17, 17, as we look at our story today, and you can uh, turn in your Bibles there, if anybody still carries a Bible, and God bless you if you do it, because I think you need to be still learning where to flip those pages and find stuff, y'all, because you don't know when, when all that's going to be taken away from us, but look at 1 Kings 17, 17, sometime later, the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, and finally he died. Now, we don't know sometime later. We don't know how long that was. But just using my sanctified imagination, you know, and, and I know sometimes it's not all that sanctified. But uh, anyway, judging from her reaction, it's been long enough that she's gotten comfortable. Yeah. You know, she was starving to death. And her son, her little son with her, about to eat their last meal. And so we, we know from the story, last week she's the, the widow that God chose to provide for the prophet Elijah during that intense drought, you know, that was, that was during that time that was ravishing the land. And so we know that she's, she's been sustained for a while, while the rest of the world is starving to death around her. And then this hits her on the blind side. You know, and, and we know that she's a godly lady because remember in Luke 4, 25 through 26, Jesus commended her and, and 
uh, commended her before the others, saying that God couldn't find a faithful widow in Israel. So he sent the prophet Elijah up to Zarephath, up to Satan's seat, and found this godly lady to provide for him so that he could work a miracle through. So she and her son have escaped starvation through her faithfulness by giving her last morsel of food and giving her last bite. God multiplied it. And that food has been miraculously becoming more and more. And y'all, they're living off of that miracle right now. So when this hits her, they're living off of that. And, it, and if she hadn't given that away, they'd probably already be dead. But so after living through that famine and, and delivering, demonstrating such faith, you know, such great faith, her little son gets sick and dies. Y'all, that's not the way it's supposed to happen. When we're faithful... You know, things are supposed to go better. You know, and they don't always do that. But, but if we can remember one thing, you know, gen doing right generally brings good. All, it's, a, it's a law of sowing and reaping. But doing the right thing doesn't guarantee nothing bad will happen. But if we can always think of one thing. God has larger purposes in mind every time something happens. He's always got a bigger picture. He's always got something more. And, and you know, and those, those godly people can have questions that start popping up when things happen. Like in 1 Kings 17, 18, then she said to Elijah, Oh man of God, why have you done this to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? And she starts thinking like most of us. Is it because of some sin that happened? Is it because of something I did a long time ago? And that thing that we've confessed a thousand times starts coming up in our mind that we've really never gotten over it? Even though God forgave it, we start dragging up stuff like that? It's just natural, y'all. And the devil loves to get us on that crazy train. He, uh, believe me, he does. If he, can, if he can get you there and take your eyes off God and off the grace of God and His forgiveness, He's got you right where He wants you. But see, God doesn't play games like that. When we've repented of sin and turned from it, God doesn't retroactively go back and punish us over it. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to get those things out of our head sometimes. You know... But, uh, or sometimes we start thinking there's, there's something in the fine print that we missed. You know, God's contract with us. You know, uh, is, there, is there something I'm missing? Did I, did I not get something right? And am I, you know, what's going on? Uh, but see, see, God doesn't have one of those, those, those buttons at the bottom of the promises where you click on that. And then there's 12 pages of things that where he could get out of it if he wanted to, but you ain't got time to read all that. You know, and you, you start thinking, you, did I miss something, you know, about that? Let me show you what God's fine print is. When he makes a promise in Hebrews 6, 17 and 18, it says, God also bound himself with an oath. The God of this universe made an oath. What's he doing making an oath to us? Man, he, he doesn't have to do anything. But, but not only does he make the promises of in, in unimaginable grace to us, then he goes and, and makes an oath that he's going to keep it to us. He says, so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things that are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Now that's God's fine print. That's what, that's what he wants us to know. Now let's go back to our story in 1 Kings 17. And then she said, oh man of God, what, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sin? So she starts, she starts looking for someone to blame. She knows Elijah has a real connection with God. You know, and, the, and that's the other thing we do. We start, we start blaming, start finding somebody to blame and, and playing that blame game. So why, so God, why did you let this happen? God, you could have stopped this. And he didn't. See, we don't have all the answers we'd like to have in this life. 
But that's when real faith kicks in, y'all, when we don't see all the answers. Look at Hebrews 11, 1. It says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Y'all, yeah. when you can't see, you look to God. Yeah. Yeah, and that's when you believe. That's when real faith rises up inside of you. And so, so when that unthinkable happens, number two, what makes the unmovable move? I drive an old pickup truck, and I, I recently bought me a newer old pickup truck. <laughs> and when I bought that newer old pickup truck, they gave me two keys to it, and I test drove it several times and all that, and it worked just fine, and got it home, and the thing wouldn't start. And, and I'm not talking about just like a, needing a boost off or something. It just wouldn't start. And so, you know, I have it towed down to the shop, and the, the mechanic says, it won't do it. You know, it starts perfectly. It works just fine. So, so I bring it back home, and it won't start. <laughs> I go back to the shop with it, and the mechanic discovers that I got two keys. One key had a computer chip in it, and the other one didn't. Yeah. See, one of them was a duplicate, and it ain't going to start that thing. I paid $150 to find that out. <laughs> but y'all, when we get to a place where we need a mountain to move, you have to have the right key. And to make the unmovable move, y'all, to get it started, you have to have the right key. And the key to making the unmovable move is faith in the living God who delights to reveal himself to his children. Y'all, faith doesn't get the glory. Faith just recognizes the glory of God and that He can do it. Y'all, faith is, faith, true faith always wants the will of God. Yes. Always, always. always. See, God, but God, like we said, God always has larger purposes in mind. And, and this dear mother, y'all, who's ang in anguish in her soul, her little boy has died. You know, she's living off of a miracle. She's got a, a prophet in her household. You know, she's, she's boarding him, keeping him up. And, and so God, see, what she can't see is that God has allowed her to see these glorious purposes. And not everybody gets chosen for that, y'all. But those who are willing to walk through the fire with him. You know, and so... And, uh, she was allowed to witness things with her own eyes. And so, so uh, Elijah, he, sa he says in seven, 1 Kings 17, 19, he says, he said, give me your son. So he took the child's body from her, carried her upstairs to the room where he was staying, and laid the body on his bed. See, Elijah's got to get alone with God. He's got to go to the place where he's used to hearing the voice of God. And this was his his place where he met with God. This was his place of preparation where God's going to prepare him for one of the greatest showdowns in the history. And look, look at this. He's probably thinking, you know, God, you ask me to take her last meal from her. And then look what happens. Said, and, and, She's given herself to take care of me. And now this, look what he says. Look at what Elijah says in verse 20. He says, Elijah cried out to God, Oh Lord, my God, why have you brought this tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? Mm. One thing you always got to know is God's sovereign. He is, he is in charge. And so when you start there, you always start there, y'all. And he's good. See, Elijah gets in on the blame game. But, but really what he's doing, y'all, he's, he's bearing his soul to God. He's getting raw with him. This is a raw situation. And he's, he's getting raw with God. Look in 17 and 21. And look, he stretches himself out over the child three times and cried out to the Lord, Oh, Lord, my God, please let this child's life return to him. In desperation, he kneels down beside the 
dead body of that little boy and he cries out and and just crying out to God please save this child y'all this was a a bold prayer nobody ever prayed that as far as we know it's the first time anybody ever prayed that the dead would be raised and there's no other record of it in the Bible up until that time and so he's, he's, he's getting where, you know, God, I got to hear from you. God, either you got to answer this prayer or you got to tell me no. I'm, I'm staying right here until I get it. And look at, look at this story in, John, in Luke 18, 1, that Jesus told about this kind of prayer that moves the unmovable. In Luke 18, 1, it says, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. So Jesus is trying, y'all, Jesus is trying to teach us a lesson about prayer here. So let's don't miss it. See, there's a, there's a certain kind of prayer that gets God's attention. And Jesus is trying to teach us that. You know, he was, this, this judge that uh, he's about to tell us about, see, he was a wicked judge. He didn't always do the right thing. But the poor lady just wouldn't shut up. Look, look. It's it said, you know, for a while he was ignoring her, but long but after long enough of her over and over, look what it says in, in down in Luke 8, 4 and 5. It says, the judge ignored her for a while, but finally said to himself, you know, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out. <laughs> with her constant requests. Y'all, that's God. Jesus said, listen to what that judge said. That's what he said. That's what Jesus wants us to learn how to pray like that woman. He said, ask, seek, and not keep on asking, keep on seeking. It'll be open to you, he said. Look at eight, uh, Luke 18, six, 6 and 7. It says, Jesus said, learn a lesson from that unjust judge. Learn, learn a lesson from that. Remember, he started out saying, you know, so that people wouldn't, wouldn't quit praying. And, and he did, I didn't include it in here, but he did end this parable, this story with the statement. He said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find people praying like that on the earth? Come on, man. See, you, you to pray like that, y'all, you got to believe your request is right. Yes. See, that's what that lady was saying. Judge, do the right thing. See, when, when you know your cause is right, you know you're in the will of God. You know that you come to God and, and you talk to Him like that and be real with Him. Say, Lord, I need you to do the right thing. Yeah. Do your will. Do your word, God. Amen. Do what you say in your word. That's why when you pray back the promises to God, see, you're claiming those promises. Amen. And when you're claiming them, you know, that, that's, that's you're holding God to His Word. Now, uh, Jesus told us to pray like that, y'all, and I don't understand all that. I just know that Jesus taught us to pray like that, and the Bible says it. Mm -hmm. he, wants to, he wants to hear from us. Amen. He wants to hear your soul. He doesn't want to hear flowery, big, big long, uh, you know, yeah. eloquent prayers. Right. I mean, He does if they're from the heart, but... He, he doesn't want you praying and pressing somebody. He wants you to get with him and bear your soul to him and stay with him. The third thing, when the unbelievable becomes visible, when our faith becomes sight, there's nothing to be compared. When you know the hand of God has moved in your behalf, there's nothing to be compared with that. Look at uh, 1 Kings, back in 1 Kings 17, 22, it says, so the Lord heard Elijah's prayer and the life of the child returned and he revived. Mm, hmm. Verse 23 says, Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, your son is alive. 
Y'all, this is the happiest Mother's Day there ever was in the history of the world. This unbelievable miracle has become visible in real time. Right here, right now in the world we live. God wants to show up. Y'all, He wants to show out in your behalf. He, he wants to reveal to you how much He loves you. Nothing will ever become more than Jesus dying on the cross for you. No, there will never be another greater miracle than the fact that God would come to earth and lay down His life for someone like me and you. Uh, y'all, there will never be a greater miracle. Don't, don't, well, let's don't ever lose sight of that. In verse uh, 24, it says, Then the woman told Elijah... Now I know for sure you're a man of God and that the Lord truly speaks through you. See, only God has the power of life and death. Y'all, this story is for us to believe in Jesus Christ who, has, who, who had the power to lay His life down and pick it back up. Amen. This points to the one true God who can, who can live, give life beyond death. And there's only one person who's ever conquered death. There's only one way to get there, and it's through Jesus Christ, the only one who's ever conquered death. Y'all, in closing, I want to tell you a little story about uh, a great Christian named Augustine of Hippo, uh, St. Augustine. He, he's had a, and he was an African bishop, and by the way, you'd be amazed at all the pictures of him showing him he's, he's white, <laughs> Really, it happens. I don't, you know, make, we, make, we make them all white, you know. But he wasn't white. He was, he was an African. He was African. And he was, he had a, he's had more impact. Well, I don't know about, I'd say more impact than anybody outside of maybe the Apostle Paul. I'm talking about just people. You know, a long, certainly a longer impact. He wrote some incredible writings that people have been studying and reading for about 1,500 years, give or take a few years. And I, I've read some of his confessions, and uh, I forget the name of the other one. Uh, but anyway, he's, he's got some great writings, and he's still, still ministering today. But Augustine wasn't always... A godly man. When Augustine's mother Monica raised him in the church, see, he never had a real relationship with God. And as soon as he got old enough, he checked out, and it was wild women and lots of liquor. That's that's what he lived. You know, and he he lived that life, and his mother prayed and prayed and prayed. There's diaries and things of hers. She prayed daily, begging God to save her son. So Augustine ships off to Rome. I'm going to the big city. And so while he's there, he comes under the influence of a great, another great Christian, and he gets saved. So Augustine wants to go back home and, find, and, and go back home to his mother and tell her, Mom, I'm home. I'm back. His mother died. His mother died while he's on the way. Yeah. Y'all tell, thank your mother while you still can. He didn't get to see her in this life, but he's rejoicing with her today. I guarantee you that. Only God knows how many wayward children have been, humanly speaking, ended up saved because of a godly praying mother. I'm, I'm one of those. Y'all, I, I'm one. I, I tell that every Mother's Day, and I'll never quit telling it. See, but God is calling you today. If you've never turned to God and asked for forgiveness of your sins, y'all, and believed in Jesus, now's the time to do it. God says never, it's never put it off till later. It's always now is the time. And, and y'all, there, there's no other way. There's just, there's just one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. There, there's just no other way. But you can't do it on your own. You know, it's, it's through Him, and it's got to be by grace. It's got to be a gift. Y'all, anything else, 
gives us some glory. And we don't, we don't add anything to it. We just receive a gift. That's all we do. So I'm asking you today to open your heart to him if you haven't. Uh, we're going to sing a song right now. And that's a time where, y'all, if, you, if you'd like to come forward and, and reconsecrate your life, just come to the altar and pray. I mean, maybe you want to talk a little bit or something. You know, we're here for you. You know, just just come to God and do business with him.